Hello again, everybody, and welcome back. This is going to be the third OpenCV tutorial video in a series of at least five videos. Not sure how far I'm going to go yet, uh, but anyhow, in this video, we're going to take a look at how to compile uh, OpenCV from source. Uh, you might be wondering, why would you want to do that? Well, there's quite a few reasons, actually, that you might need at some point to compile OpenCV from source, uh, including uh, many options, uh, such as the WithQT option or threaded building blocks, are not part of some pre-compiled binaries. And if you need to use those options for various reasons, you're going to have to be able to compile from source yourself uh, to use those options. For example, in the next video, I'm going to do a tutorial on how to use OpenCV and QT. And OpenCV 2.3.1 by default does not have the WithQT option enabled, so you'd have to compile from source there. There are many other options as well as threaded building blocks and other features. In addition to that, uh, pre-compiled binary is not available for every operating system or compiler combination. For example, if you're using Windows 7 and Microsoft Visual Studio 2010, there's probably going to be a pre-compiled binary out there you can find. But what if you're using something different? What if you're developing on a cell phone? You know, what if you desire to get into Linux or Macintosh uh, development with OpenCV eventually? There probably won't be a pre-compiled binary out there for every combination of you know, operating system and compiler that you might want to use eventually. So you definitely want to learn how to compile OpenCV from source. Uh, also, on occasion, you'll get a compatibility concern with the pre-compiled binaries in a certain particular operating system or compiler installation or configuration that will end up resulting in runtime errors. In those cases, oftentimes the resolution is to compile OpenCV from source on the same computer and with the same compiler that you're going to run OpenCV with, and that can result. Uh, also, you might desire to get the latest version of OpenCV from the nightly build, or you might desire a certain version, maybe an older version, where a pre-compiled binary was not made available. Or even further than that, you might eventually get really good with OpenCV and decide to uh, make modifications to it yourself because you need to add a feature, or you might want to participate in the OpenCV uh, development process, in which case you'll definitely need to know how to compile OpenCV from source. Uh, I could go on and on, but rather than that, let's get started on our first OpenCV uh, from source compile. Alrighty, so to get started today, We'll download the software that we're going to be using. It's only two downloads. In the previous videos, uh, we've been using OpenCV 2.2, but to do something a little bit more up-to-date, let's go to 2.3.1. So, whoops, didn't quite click correctly there. There we go. So we'll do 2.3.1, and then we'll download this OpenCV 2.3.1 winsuperpack.exe. And next, we're going to get the utility to actually perform the compile from source, and that's called CMake. There might be other alternatives out there to compile OpenCV, but CMake is very user-friendly. Uh, it's a free download. I definitely recommend using CMake. That's what we're going to use today. And here's the version that, that you want to get is Windows 132 installer, pre-compiled binary. And go ahead and save it. Okay, so now our downloads are complete, and we're here in our downloads folder. So let's go ahead and install CMake first. It's not really necessary to go through all the install screens for CMake. Go ahead and choose all the default options, and then you'll be all set. Alrighty, so now CMake is installed, and we're back in our downloads directory. But before we unzip the OpenCV 2.3.1 Win Super Pack, let's add a directory for our OpenCV install. So we're going to go to our C driver, whichever drive you prefer for your installation, and then new folder. And let's call this directory OpenCV. Dash 2.3.1. We're going to be adding this to the path variable later on, so please double check your spelling here. Make sure there's no typos. And let's do a quick refresh. And if you still have the OpenCV 2.2 install from the previous videos on there, it's not going to hurt anything. You can leave them both on there. Uh, you'll, we'll see as we get to the configuration later how that's going to work. So for now, let's go back to the downloads directory. And then we're going to go ahead and now we're going to unzip the OpenCV Win 2.3.1 Super Pack. Of course, we trust it's OK. Now it's going to say Extract to Downloads. We're definitely going to change that. We're going to Extract to OpenCV 2.3.1, which we just made, and Extract. And I'm probably going to stop the video at this point and fast forward because this takes a few minutes. OK, so our extraction is done. And here we are in the directory OpenCV. 2.3.1. So let's take a quick look at it. This is a huge extraction, of course. All this here is what was extracted. So going back to this directory, OpenCV 2.3.1, if this is what's from the extraction, 
it, there's different ways to do this. Here's how I would suggest doing it. I would suggest in the same directory here, create a folder, my build. That way, everything that we build from source, we can put in my build. And then everything that's in OpenCV, we know that was part of the extraction. OK, so now we're ready to start up CMake. CMake GUI. And do the actual compile. So here it's going to ask us, where is the source code? So that's going to be the extraction. OpenCV 2.3.1 OpenCV. And then where to build the binaries. We're going to choose that to be OpenCV 2.3.1 My Build. Then next we're going to choose Configure. And we're going to choose Visual Studio 2010 as our compiler. As long as you have uh, Microsoft Visual Studio 2010, the free Express Edition installed, that is fine. This option should appear here. Here's all the compilers that were auto-detected, but we'll stick with Visual Studio 2010. And we're going to say uh, Use Default Native Compilers and Finish. And that's going to bring up a red screen with a whole bunch of options for us. Alrighty, so I had to fast forward the video for a moment there. That, that took a few minutes. Again, this is not really the latest and greatest in computer hardware I'm using here, but that's okay. Um, basically, all these default options, we can leave how they are except for one. In the next video, uh, we're going to be covering how to use OpenCV and Qt. And you'll notice down here this with Qt option by default is not checked. So we definitely want to check that. Otherwise, everything in the next video won't work. And then we're going to go to configure. And configuring is done. And then we're going to go to generate. Now, uh, before we do that, if we go into the MyBuild directory now, this is what it's made so far. Uh, CMake has made so far, I should say. And now we're going to do generate. And it's going to put some more in that directory. And generating's done, so now we can close CMake. And here's everything that CMake has arranged for us so far. Now you'll notice critically, there's this file opencv.sln. This is a regular old Microsoft Visual C++ solution file. So when we double click on that, it's going to open up. Well, first it asks us this question. To be perfectly honest, I'm not sure why it asks Visual C++ Express 2010 or Visual C++ Express 10. Those should be the same thing, I suspect, but in any case, I've been choosing Visual C++ Express 2010. That's been working fine for me, so let's go with that. And this is a huge program, of course, OpenCV, uh, in its entirety, so it's going to take a moment to open. Alrighty, Visual Studio has now finished parsing all our files for us. Um, if you're so inclined, you could take a look at all the guts of OpenCV here. Um, of course, there's tons of source code uh, to go through, but at the moment, let's not get into that. Um, let's simply go to build and then build. And again, probably going to fast forward here because this is going to take a minute. And there's our successfully completed compile. Okay, so now that our compile process is complete, we have this enormous install in the OpenCV and the My Build directory. So rather than worrying about every single directory individually, we can simply uh, keep in mind that there's three critical directories in our OpenCV install that we're going to need to know about when we go to configure OpenCV in our environment of choice. And those are the bin directory, which we're going to add to the operating system path variable. We'll get to that in a moment. And that's uh, OpenCV 2.3.1 My Build Bin Debug. Then we have the Include directory, and also the Library directory, which we're going to add to Visual Studio or Qt, whichever one we're using, which is going to be OpenCV 2.3.1 OpenCV Build Include, and then OpenCV 2.3.1 My Build Live and Debug. So let's get started with our configuration by adding the bin directory to the path variable. Alrighty, so we're going to go to Start Control Panel system. Of course this will be a little different if you're not using Windows 7, but hopefully any operating system it'll be at least more or less similar. Advanced system settings, environment variables, and I prefer to choose the system variable one rather than the user specific one. This way it'll be for all users. And then we're going to choose path, edit, and there's this really long string in this small text box, but that's okay. At the end we're going to put a semicolon and then we're going to add C colon backslash OpenCV dash 2.3.1 backslash my build backslash bin 
backslash debug. And make sure to double check it for typos. It's critical that your path can see this directory. And once we're confident it's correct, let's choose OK and OK. And OK, and after all that compile and installation and manipulating the path variable, it would be a good idea to uh, do a reboot at this time. Alrighty, so now we've done our compile and we've modified our path variable and we've rebooted. So let's go ahead and configure a program for Visual Studio use. So uh, what we'll do here is I think we'll take the program from the previous tutorial, Tracker 10, and uh, so I'll just copy this out to the desktop for a moment. And then we'll rename it something else. Uh, let's go with Tracker 10B. On the sun copying, just in a moment. There we go. And then we can cut and paste it back into the same directory. And there we go. And let's open the solution. And Visual C will pull up in just a moment for us here. Alrighty, so we just fast forwarded there for a moment while the project was loading. So here's the source, it's the same as in the previous tutorial video. And we're not going to need to change the source at all, however, we will need to change the property sheet. So here's the property sheet from the previous video set to use the 2.2 precompiled binary install. So we're going to go ahead and right click on that and choose remove. Move the selected configuration of property sheet, yes, and then we're going to right click on debug Win32 and add a new project property sheet and let's call it my open cv let's say 231 for 2.3.1 prop sheet and add and then we're going to set the second and third of the paths that we had looked at earlier so we're going to go to visual c++ directories include directories and edit. And we're going to set this to c colon backslash open cv 2.3.1 open cv build and then include. And that's all set. So now we're going to set the library directory. Edit new and we're going to set that to c colon backslash OpenCV 2.3.1, my build, and live, and debug. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to select uh, the linker files here, so linker input, and then additional dependencies, and edit, and actually let's choose apply and OK. This step will be a lot easier if we resize Visual Studio here. And then in the file browser window, if we go to that directory specifically, which again is C OpenCV 2.3.1, my build, live debug. So what we're going to need to do, well, let's bring it up in Visual Studio here. So here's the prop sheet and additional dependencies. Edit. So then what we're going to do is in the additional dependencies box, we're going to type the name of each of these files here that end in .live. So OpenCV Calib 3D 231D.live, Contrib 231D.live, and so on all the way down. Alright, now we're done typing all those in. Um, of course, you could only include the ones you're going to use on each specific project, but I would personally suggest including them all. That way you can simply copy this same property sheet to all your future projects and you don't have to make a new property sheet each time. So now we can go ahead and choose OK. 
apply OK. We maximize Visual Studio. And it might take a moment here to take a look at those files and make sure everything's in the right spot. OK. And now we can go to build, rebuild, hopefully compile clean if we didn't make any typos. And that's sure a good sign there. And now we can go to debug and start without debugging and give it a test. And it works great. Congratulations, you now know how to compile OpenCV from source. For the upcoming OpenCV tutorial videos, tutorial 4 is going to be uh, using OpenCV with Qt, and tutorial uh, video 5 will be using MgoCV. Uh, that's a wrapper class that allows, um, within a Visual Studio Windows Forms project, allows making OpenCV function calls. Uh, after 4 and 5, I'm not really sure which direction to go from there. Uh, here's some possibilities. Uh, USB motor control example with Visual Studio, or redoing the USB uh, demo board host software in Qt, and then to do a USB motor control example in both Qt and Visual Studio. Or uh, we could go much further with OpenCV. So far, uh, these, these videos are really just uh, sort of covering OpenCV configuration and installation and doing a basic program. This, this has not really even scratched the surface of all the things that OpenCV is capable of, um, you know, or possibly other things. So please go ahead and post uh, some comments, uh, you know, to the video if you have any particular areas of interest or would prefer a direction one way or the other. And I'll see everybody next time.